Hey, it's Steve. It's May 3rd, 2017. Time is 7.47 and it's 43 degrees Fahrenheit out. And that is actually, uh, you can see in the Jeep, see blue sky and that sun on me. For the first time in a long time, it's sunny out. But anyway, today I'm going to talk about another type of sedimentary rock. And this type of sedimentary rock is unique because it's the only type Earth no longer makes. Uh, Earth no longer produces this rock type, and I'll get into that in a minute, but first I want to show you what it is. It's called banded iron formation, BIF or BIF, we just call it BIF. Um, I have a piece here that I've cut and polished by hand. You can see the metallic gray, the reds, that's the unfinished side. But this rock right here is my favorite rock type. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, banded iron formations I'm gonna, uh, are, are also kind of unique. Like th that piece I just showed you, the gray metallic part, that's, that's an iron mineral. Yeah, in this case, in this particular rock, it's hematite. Uh, the red is what people call red jasper. It's really, red jasper is just really red shirt. We have uh, all kinds of names, fancy names for stuff that is just simple and stuff, you know, simple. Like like last episode I told you about how some geologists like to call conglomerate, or like to call, you know, something that's basically a pebbly sandstone a conglomerate. Um, you know, and then we have things like, uh, you know, people call purple quartz amethyst, but what is purple quartz? Um, but anyway, um, banded iron formations, um, none of them survived the Precambrian. Okay, as a matter of fact, from early Earth, from about three and a half billion to 1.85 billion years ago, they're really common. Uh, they're very common, more common than uh, hematite, or more common than carbonates. And good thing they are, because that's where we get most of our iron from. This particular piece right here is from the UP. This would be from Jasper Mound. Um, we're not sure what the formation is there because of the complex faulting and folding and stuff in the area. But there's biffs all over up there, okay? Um, and they're often referred to as iron districts. Um, but the, so, so up until 1.85 billion years ago, they were really common, okay? Now, there are some younger than 1.85 billion years, but they've become very rare and they become really impure, kind of stretching. Some of them, kind of, it's kind of a stretch that you can call them banded iron formations. Um, but the last known one is, if memory serves me, about 800 million years old. So still well within the Precambrian, okay? And it's really, there was, something did happen at 1.85 billion years ago that might have partially affected their deposition, um, and that would be the Sudbury impact in Ontario. That was a huge impact. We know we've dated it precisely to 1.85 billion years ago. We've even found the ejecta as far west as Minnesota. Okay, um, so th this was a huge event. It made the KT asteroid, you know, not like a not look like a walk in the park, but the KT asteroid was definitely down there on the list of, you know, impact power, I guess, <laughs> compared to the Sudbury one. Um, but banded iron formations are also kind of um, weird because we really don't know how they formed. Um, there's, see, since they're not actively being formed today, it's hard to come to a, you know, consistent theory. Um, some lab tests have been done. You can precipitate iron from seawater. Most banded iron formations, if not all, are marine. There are some, like the uh, ones on US-41 near, uh, uh, I believe it's Champion Lake, um, kind of on the way from Lance to Marquette in the UP, that are deep sediments, like, uh, you know, uh, in a four arc basin, you, we can tell because the iron there uh, ha does have uh, the iron part, or when I say iron, I mean mineral hematite, like in this case, hematite, um, is mixed in with a lot of black uh, clay particles. 
um, and the jasper part, this red part, is more purple and it more exists in blobs and some of it's even granular. You look at it and it looks like a quartzite, uh, but it's still dominantly made of iron minerals, so it's still banded iron formation. Um, and then you get a lot that will form in sh what appears to be shallow tidal shelf environments like the outcrop exposed in Iron Mountain right off the highway to the north. It was quarried out it's just, and in front of it's just a big parking lot for sale. That has a lot of impurities in it. A lot of sandstones mixed in with it. A lot of shales. Uh, a lot of non-jasper and non-red shirt within it. Um, so we can form them in different types of environments, but they all seem to be marine, okay? Now, um, so how did they form? I mean, these things aren't made anymore. Most likely, it had something to do with microorganisms, just like the Precambrian limestones, although a lot of those are chemical precipitants. We do see stromatolites in some of them and stuff like that. So life probably had something to do with it. And sometimes in these banded iron formations, you will find stromatolytic mounds. So um, they're rare, but they're there. Uh, so we think uh, single-celled life had something to do with the formation of these, okay? Um, now, when they just, now as they disappear, you know, I mean, at about two and a half billion years ago, we start to get carbonate deposits, and the, we still have banded iron formations. As a matter of fact, um, the vast majority of the ones in the Upper Peninsula are, are between 1.85 and about two billion years old. So th there's a lot of them in that time frame, but carbonates became more common as the Precambrian progressed. Now, I don't know if that, and we don't know in general, if life changed somehow from precipitating stuff like this to precipitating stuff like carbonates, uh, there was probably a change in the sea chemistry as well. Um, you know, and during that time, we started pumping free oxygen in the atmosphere. Sing the thing with single-celled life is it's really hard to identify what is a fossil record because even a microorganism, I mean, you can't tell, even if you, even if you could see a pre-Cambrian single-celled life form under a, a microscope or electron microscope, and you could be like, oh, it has a cell wall and all that, you, you're not going to see any DNA. You're not gonna see any internal workings of that cell. So we have to kind of really use the rocks to see how life changed in the pre-Cambrian. Um, and, uh, so it's still a bit of a mystery if they were dominantly, uh, you know, seawater precip just precipitated out of seawater or were formed by microorganisms. It's probably a combination of both. It usually is just like it is with limestones and uh, um, other carbonate rocks. Um, but um, that that's my basic my rant for today. Um, but I want to show you this rock in detail more. Uh, and get the gray hematite. You can see the beds are not even. Um, you can even see things like the cracks in here. You can see micro faults. They are offset. Now, if we were mapping in the field, we would ignore these because when you're mapping at a scale of one inch equals uh, uh, 2,000 feet, <laughs> those little cracks aren't going to be mappable. But uh, yeah, this is like textbook banded iron formation right here, and it's really pretty. Um, but that's my rant for today, and I hope you learned something.